Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm really excited to talk about this film because I thought it was really great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, now you said that you agreed with Kurosawa that you agreed that you're always learning in filmmaking. What did you learn was the biggest difference between making a film and making a TV show? Um, the physical endurance part of it, seriously. You know, to shoot an episode of television is anywhere from eight days to, I don't know, maybe some of the more expensive shows, 15 or 16 days. But a 50-day schedule is, t is really tough, especially you know, with nights. That's very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I wouldn't, you wouldn't think so, but it, for me, it's difficult. Yeah, one thing I was impressed with was how historically accurate it was. Did you, what, what were the kind of troubles that you ran into in trying to make this movie as historically accurate? Plenty, because everywhere, I think you're, I think you're, you're better off making a movie that's set in 1860 than in 1960, because nothing from 1860 is around, so you'd have to create it all. But um, in 1960, you can delude yourself to thinking, well, we can shoot on this main street because a lot of these buildings are from 1920. But there's so much different stuff, so much different sign, signage, and you know the obvious things, the satellite dishes, and just there's just stuff you can't you can't keep your eye on all of it yeah. until you're shooting, and then you have, to, you have to cut and get rid of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting that really the only family member that uh, supported Douglas was his sister Evelyn. Um, did you have somebody like that kind of supporting you during your music career or later on during your um, your careers? Television not in my maker? family, no. no. My 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 wife did, but okay. not, no, no, I, ha I have no brothers and sisters, and my parents didn't support it. No. I mean, they didn't. My parents didn't. They weren't. They would rather I'd done something else. Mm -hmm. You explained that your main intention was to find like the best actors for the roles. Were you at all worried that they weren't going to be as musically talented as you wanted them to be? Yeah, we were worried. Uh, we started out by trying to find musicians who could act. Um, we had a big online search and. <clears throat> went along to music schools and drama schools in New York, and we a lot of people answered it, and we auditioned them. I didn't even audition that many of the casting people did, and they really didn't it didn't cut it. We we found one guy that way, the guy who plays Joe Petuto, uh, the bass player in the movie, Bram Macarella. He was from Bard, and he's a musician and an actor. Um, but the other the main three guys, uh, John and Jack Houston and Will Brill were, had never touched instruments before. And we, we had no way of knowing whether they'd be able to play or not. And we were really lucky because they did. Yeah, and they, I thought they were all really great. In the they really worked hard at it. And Stephen Van Zandt really, really, really took them under his wing and really showed them the ropes. Mm -hmm. it, it, he, he imparted a great deal of not, not only just musical knowledge, I think, but cultural knowledge and feeling. And uh, he's that way. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen Van Zandt had said that music, he considered music to be kind of like a unifying source. Would you say the same about music and then also maybe about film? No, I'm not sure that movies do do that. Oh, okay. I mean, I think movies, uh, motion pictures are still m more of an intellectual, I mean, they're very, very emotional, but their uh, music is pure feeling. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that there's been almost as much of like a revolutionary time in music since the 60s? Well, I was really fond of, I was fond of like 1978 through 81, Elvis Costello, The Pretenders, The Sex Pistols, uh, Graham Parker, uh, Rock Pile, Dave Edmonds, Nick Lowe. I really liked that a lot. Was it as original? Probably not, but I really liked it. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that there are as many kind of like young bands that are out there still trying to make it as it was during like the 60s, like how this movie There was probably like? are, but I mean, th this movie is about the fact that all of a sudden, after the Beatles, every kid <clears throat> went out and got a guitar. Not every kid, but <laughs> millions of them, and started to put, put, put bands together. And that's when garage bands really started. Mm -hmm. um, before that, it was, a, it was a few kids that tried it, but not, not everybody. I think now, now, it's like everybody I talked to, have you ever been in a band? Uh, I was in band in high school. <laughs> okay. Oh, in band? Yeah. Oh, okay. But you ever been in a, in a, in a rock and roll no, band? No, I was never that. Most of your co colleagues have done some stint I've done some time in a band. Yeah, I have I know a lot of people that they all have bands in high school. That's kind of why I wanted to do the movie. The movie's for those people, for all of us mm -hmm. who, didn't, who never made it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's all the time we have, so I want to thank you again for this interview. Thank you. And definitely go check out um, Not Fade Away when it opens in L.A. New York in December 21st, and you're watching Frequency TV. Thank you.